Okay. Okay. Take one million and seven. This is the one. This is the magic number. Here we go. Hey, my name is Alex Vieira, and this is a little story I wrote called George's Coffee Date. I hope you guys enjoy it, because I enjoyed writing it, and I really hope that we, we can share experience together, I guess. All right. 4 p.m. Saturday. There's a thick gust of wind piercing the air outside, sending out spirals of snow against the window pane. I shiver for a moment thinking about it as I begin to wonder and let's take another sip of my coffee. I the parking lot nervously as I start to think to myself, and maybe she's trapped out there in all that mess. Should I call her? Maybe, maybe um, I'll wait a couple minutes. I mean, uh, it's only 407. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure her son's only being a cautious driver. Yeah. I catch my reflection in the napkin holder as I begin to adjust my hair a little. Make sure there's nothing in my teeth. Yep, yep, there we go. Mm-hmm. Now we're looking good. Now we are ready for our date. I think. Take another sip of my coffee as I open up the newspaper again. I've already read all the good parts at this point, so now I'm just trying to keep my hands and eyes distracted. After all these years, I'm still just as nervous waiting for a date as when I was 16. <laughs> oh man, I quietly chuckled at the thought of it. George? Evelyn, that voice cuts through me like butter. I drop my newspaper and I look up. She's smiling fondly at me as I go to pull out her chair. I want to say something clever, but all that comes out is, Evelyn, I, wow. It's so nice to see you. You too, George. How have you been? She looks at me with her inquisitive brown eyes. I've been good. I've been staying down in Willowside. The whole gang's there. Charlie, Ed, Pete, Mabel, Wendy. I even still get together with Ed sometimes to play trumpet. <laughs> you know how much I love to blow out hot air. Evelyn lets out a hearty, genuine laugh. I can't help but smile. How about you, Evelyn? How has it been? Things, things have been alright. My son Bill moved back in lately and has been helping me around the house. The garden is so lovely, George. You should come over sometime for tea. I'd love that, Evelyn. Also, I'm happy to hear about Bill. He's grown into such a fine young lad. You're right. He has, hasn't he? Evelyn pauses for a moment, hesitating. But her eyes sharpen and she lets it out. So this was pretty out of the blue. You're calling me out for coffee like this? What made me cross your mind? My heart sinks to my chest as I scramble to come up with something, anything to say back. <sighs> well, to be honest, you never really did leave my mind. I know it's been years and years, but believe me, I tried, but, I... well, I, I still... 
here. Let me give you an example. I pull out a small hand-painted box with a small cardinal painted in red on it. What's that? Evelyn glances at it for a moment before locking her warm, soft eyes onto me. Open it up. My stomach ties up in knots as the words escape my lips. Evelyn smiles as she grazes her fingers across the red cardinal, then opens it up. Inside is a small, faded leaf. A little worn with time, some of the pieces seem like they fell off and they're all cracked up, but every single piece is lovingly glued back onto the page. Evelyn starts to tear up a little. George. I open up. You remember this leaf, don't you? When I first met you, I thought you were the most beautiful girl I have ever seen in my life. I wanted to let you know how I feel. I wanted you to even know that I existed. So I picked up a leaf off of the tree I was watering and went up to your till and handed you it and just smiled and said hi. <laughs> Evelyn laughs. I acted like you gave me a diamond necklace. It really was a sweet gesture though. My eyes start to continue. Well, then two years later, found the leaf in an old book on the shelf. I was shocked you kept it after all these years. Something so small, so minuscule. Most people would just throw it away, forget about it the moment that I handed it to them. But you kept it. You took it home, you preserved the memory. It's the most beautiful thing I ever, ever, really felt. I knew in that moment that this is the girl that I would marry. This is the girl I'd spend the rest of my life with. So I didn't have any money to afford a ring, but I thought that leaf would be a perfect way to propose. I took it out of that page and I set it in an old box. And I painted it and got everything all ready for that moment, that perfect moment where I would pop the question. Well, that moment never came. Life got in the way. My problems, my job, everything. I never expected us to drift away. I never expected any of that to happen. But it did. Then you met Paul. Then I met Betty. And well, the rest is history, I suppose. But it wasn't, was it? I mean, here we are sitting at this table right now. <sighs> Evelyn, I've been through three, three marriages. And each time I'd work up myself the courage to throw away that leaf to make it a thing of the past. And I just couldn't do it. I, I, I just, I... Evelyn stops me and rests her hand on mine. She hushes me and she lets out the words. Well, it's not too late, George. How about we give it another shot? I squeeze her hand a little and she squeezes back. I 
had loved nothing more, my cardinal. I give her a kiss and she kisses me back. I hear nothing but happy trumpet tunes. This feels right. It feels like home. We smile at each other and just simply enjoy the moment. I go up to grab her a cup of tea and hand it to her. It was already made. Orange Pacoa. You still remembered. Everyone can't help but glow a minute and I do the same. Every single moment just feels perfect right now. Is this even real? She reaches her cup up. To old flames and new beginnings. I melt into her eyes a little and repeat the same. We clink cups. Old flames and new beginnings. The end.